Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. there internet and welcome back to the intoxicated podcast if you are brand new to intoxicated this is a podcast where i have my friends on and they choose a drink and we talk about life it's my version of a variety drinking talk show very excited for this week's episode you guys because this week i actually have one of our patreons on the podcast and that is actually a friend of mine zoe who is here in halifax and came on the show. Boy, was it a naughty one. This one was a lot of fun. We had originally planned the episode to be just kind of about how we deal with life and stress as adults, but it turned into a sex episode. Honest to God, not many deviations from that. So this is definitely an episode if you are in a car with a young child or your parents, who knows, maybe you're driving grandma to lunch. Just be warned, this is a lot of sex stuff. Um, <laughs> might be a good idea to have headphones on for this episode. We talk a lot about casual sex and a lot of the various facets that go into that. To name a few, pubic hair, sexting, nudes, threesomes, camming, and so much more. Yeah, we um we spilled a lot of tea in this episode, let me tell you. Um, I still feel like I might even do more edits tonight just because I keep thinking like, ooh, Sarah, was that too much? Maybe you should cut that. So clips from this episode, I'm sure, may end up on a this may not stay in reel, which does happen a lot on the show. And I gotta say, uh, we do also talk about a perspective on a certain situation that I don't think people hear enough. And I'll just leave it at that. So I wanted this episode to be a get to know one of my Patreons, and boy did I ever get to know her. Um, Zoe was an amazing guest. She was everything I look for in an intoxicated guest, and that is wanting to have a good time, wanting to laugh, open to talk about everything, super confident, and just, like I said, very open. And that's my dream guest for Intoxicated. So thanks so much, Zoe, for coming on. This was a hell of a conversation. I really wanted a really sexy episode for episode 69, so I think that future episode is going to have some direct competition with this one, because whoof! It was naughty. And speaking of Patreon, like I said, Zoe is one of our $10 and up Patreons. She gets access to bonus episodes, early access to our regular episodes, and a bunch of other stuff. Patreon is awesome. I encourage you to definitely check out our Patreon page if you are not a Patreon already. Various levels on there, depending on your budget. Also, you can just sign up and support the show and let us know that you like it, because that works too. I want to give another shout out to Tyler, our other $10 and a Patreon, who supports Intoxicated. Thanks so much for your support. Um, Obviously, Tyler, let a bitch know if you're ever in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And obviously, we can have you on as well. Like I say every week, make sure you do hit the subscribe button, preferably on Apple Podcasts, but really wherever you find podcasts, to make sure you don't miss an episode of Intoxicated Podcast. As well, check out Intoxicated Reviews. That is our separate feed, hosted by my good friend Corey, who puts out episodes every week about TV and movies. He is Intoxicated's pop culture expert, and it's fantastic over there. So make sure you check that one out as well, and subscribe over there if you like it because it's a separate feed and you're not going to get those episodes unless you hit subscribe. You can follow us on social media and that is Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast, on Twitter at in underscore toxicated. You can send us feedback and questions to our Gmail account and that is intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com. That's about it, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. I actually have a charcoal face mask on right now, and it is really hard to talk with one of these on. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I sound stiffer or what, but like not being able to move my cheeks properly is really messing with me. So I'm going to shut up, and we are going to get to the super sexy, super open, and blunt episode with Zoe. And welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast. Oh, I'm here with such a special guest. It's so special. I'm here with one of our Patreons, Zoe. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, shit. Well, technically, you are supposed to get a a monthly hangout with us. 
Yeah. So this is, I'm just like, just come over. <laughs> we don't have to do this over Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, just come hang out. Perfect. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Thanks. So obviously you like Intoxicated because you're a Patreon. Love it. Oh my God. Um, so this is fucking fantastic. It turns out that I needed an episode and yet again I was like, Anyone want to come on? And you, you've expressed interest before about coming on. Yeah, man. So I was like, "Fucking let's let's fucking do this and get to know get to know ya." Yeah, a little bit. So welcome to Intoxicated. We are drinking. Mm-hmm. I actually asked you what you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I've learned that you like tequila the best, but you you picked gin and tonics. Yeah, man. So it is actually it is like yeah, it's like two thirty on a Sunday. Yeah, so it's, it's a, a good Sunday drink, right? It's a good afternoon drink. We get some lime in there, yeah. and I'm warming up to the gin and tonics. I really am. Um, oh yeah. So let's bring it in for a cheers. Let's do it. Fucking cheers. Mm mm. So, as we do, friendship origin story between me and Zoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know each other through mutual friends, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. And one time you showed up at trivia. Yeah, and I, believe, I and you had just, some pop and highlight, and I was like, oh. <laughs> "That's usually what bonds." I feel like that can bond people. Makeup and the love of yeah. Makeup. Oh my god, yeah. Good time, <laughs> like that's just it's just like, and then you like. I think I remember even saying like, "You speak in my language" or something yes. like that, because like we both love yeah. makeup and and. YouTube, like, yeah. you kind of follow the same people on YouTube mm-hmm. and stuff, so we kind of bonded over that, but honestly, like, we've never hung out alone, I so know. this is the first time we did chat a bit before turning on the mics, uh, yeah. <laughs> about just kind of my, my classic, like, okay, what can we talk about? Because I'm going to ask a lot of questions, and like, if they're inappropriate, you need to tell me now. <laughs> So that I know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like, we, we've we just kind of hung out through mutual friends. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And yeah. We were. So we had a moment in the bathroom once. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and what a moment it was. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a, there was a Halloween party. So this was, would have mm-hmm. been back in October. Yeah. And, uh... And I, I had, and I don't know who yours was, so maybe we'll find out more, but yeah. I had someone that I had been texting with mm-hmm. and we, someone made a comment about, I don't know how it happened. Mm-hmm. We ended up in the bathroom showing titties. Yeah. Oh, really yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Um, and when you have that moment with another female, it's just done. Like you've just That's bonded. It. Yeah. You, you can't go back. <laughs> you can't go back. You've seen it. And that's the thing about it. I don't really care about my boobs. Like, mm-hmm. my Me boobs. Neither. Oh, my God. Thank you. Right? They're just boobs. Like. They're just boobs. <laughs> and they're wonderful and they're fun. Yeah. And, like, vagina's different. Like, that's off limits for a lot of people, yeah. I think. <laughs> Like, you gotta be real close yo, to see that. Could you imagine going to a party and hitting up a chick and being like, yo, you wanna see chick- my vagina? <laughs> <laughs> well, because they're so different. Yeah. And that's the thing oh about my God, I feel like yeah. boobs, like, you just see them more. Cause, like, yep. you know, you see movies and you see porn. And, mm-hmm. Like, uh, boobs, like, all boobs are different too. Mm-hmm. But they're just more, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Vaginas are more. It's like a little more personal. And we're I more think. ashamed into hating our vaginas than our boobs, I find. Yeah, yeah. Which is dumb. I love my vagina. Do you? Absolutely. Uh, oh my god. I'm really jealous. I feel like I'm I'm getting there with mine. <laughs> I'm learning to like her. Yeah. But that's something all women should do. Yeah, man. Love it. Have you ever gotten like up close and personal, like with a mirror? Yeah, dude. Yeah? Oh my god. God. God, I love you. Yeah, when I get it waxed, I like get a little oh. mirror going. I'm like, damn, that's a good bitch, time to, look that's, at you. That, that's a good time to do it. Oh, yeah. And you're like feeling hella cute. Like, yeah. <laughs> the worst is when you get a wax and then like no one else sees it. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck did I just well, like, pay this $50 for? Yeah. Because <laughs> let's be honest. Like, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I don't like hair either. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm always, it's always never there. Mm-hmm. But like, you do it for yourself, but you kind of do it for other people too. Oh, yeah. Cause, like, you can it's say dollars. Yeah, exactly. Fifty to sixty bucks to like get that shit waxed. Exactly, and you can say like, "Oh, I didn't get it for anybody else but me." me. But bitch, you did. Thank you. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I know what's up. If like, you were the last woman on the planet with no one around, you would not do that. No, you would rock a full seventies oh. bush. Full just bush. all out. You would full. braid it if you wanted. Like fuck. I <laughs> admire women mm-hmm. who can do that. I yeah. really, really do. It's not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I like when I see women do that, I'm like, God damn. Get it, girl. Like, I'm like, you're just banging dudes like you don't care. Yeah. And a lot of guys, and honestly, like, I've talked to a lot of my male friends about it. Mm-hmm. A lot of them don't care. They're lying. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, ding. <laughs> they could be like, I feel like porn's like kind of ruined it for everyone. Yeah. Really. Oh my God. It really has. Mm. I mean, I've spoken to like some dudes who are like, oh, I love a bush. And I'm like, oh. Really? Do you? Are yeah. You sure. What, what's a bush to them? Like, is a bush a Just, landing strip? Yeah. Like a little triangle, like, like a patch. Like, come on. I want to see, I want to see an explosion when they take off the underwear. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It like makes that sound. That's, that's a full bush. Perfect. Really. Uh, have you ever, like, on? I love how we're on the subject of pubic hair. This was not planned, but we're rolling with it. Yeah. Um, have you ever, okay, there's two questions I have about this. Sure. Have you ever had a situation where you have the chance to hook up and you aren't totally shaved mm-hmm. and you're kind of rocking it? wild and free Mm -hmm. and you've chosen like to do it or not to do it based on that yes Uh, oh my god oh my god if it's the worst like if i'm not like prepped i won't do it i'm the same do you ever go to extreme lengths to okay i've gone to extreme lengths to prep before Mm -hmm. where it's like okay i have to go to this person's house and i'm downtown but i'm not quite prepped Mm -hmm. i will cap to my place yeah (laughs) shave without getting in the shower yeah girl like, no quite literally just splash some water down yeah. there and take the razor yeah and you know what happens when you do that oh my god goddamn razor burn <sighs> and it's the fucking worst it's the worst and yet i still do it because i'm like mm-hmm. well red bumps are better than hair yeah why do i think that way it's fucked honestly i have no idea but yeah I know what you mean. <laughs> and then, like, and then, like, I will cab to wherever they are. So yeah. It's like, I will go out of my way and, like, spend a shit ton of money to, yeah. like, not have you care <laughs> for, like, a one-night stand where yeah. it's, like, they don't fucking care about you. <laughs> no. They don't. Let's no. be real. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> They're not going to care. If they, if they want to just get their rocks off, I don't think they would care about hair. But I yeah. do for some reason. I don't know. It's just... No, way. I get it. I get it. I'm with you. <laughs> I just wanted to like look pretty. You yeah. know what I mean? I wanted to look pretty and feel pretty. Yeah. Like I like the feeling of smoothness. Oh my God. It, yeah. It's the same with legs. Like mm-hmm. I know I don't. We had this conversation last night actually with a bunch of my friends and like a lot of girls just don't feel the need to shave all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like every every three days is the max I will go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which is kind of insane. But yeah. I hate the feeling of stubble. And I hate the worst. I it's hate like sharp the f- and like awful. Like, yeah. I hate what it. is it? <laughs> I hate it. So I'll just shave my legs all the time because mm-hmm. I like smooth legs. But mm-hmm. yeah, pubic hair is interesting. Yeah. I wish I could like rock a shape or style down there. Like yeah. a star or like an arrow. Ooh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I'm just not, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Maybe some, at some point I'll embrace the pubes. Yeah. Yeah, the pubes <laughs> should be the title of the episode. I love that <laughs> because guys don't have to deal with this shit, okay? No, and it's bullshit. Oh my god, like they really don't. Man, oh man, when you're like hooking up with a dude and he's like suck on my balls and they're like mm-hmm. hairy, <laughs> and you're like what the them? fuck? Um, I've been with a few guys who have, but a lot who haven't. I don't really think I've ever experienced overly hairy balls though. I have. (laughs) Are you like picking it out of your teeth? That's the worst. Oh, yeah. Like the hair, like it's in your mouth and you're like. (laughs) Do do you know what's the worst? When Mm. you go out of your way to like shave everything Mm -hmm. and like you really think you got everything and guys. Fucking piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And guys still find a way to get your pubes in their mouth. And you're like, what the fuck? I spent an hour doing this. And there's still something down there. That's bullshit. (laughs) You took like a magnifying glass. You're like looking around and they still find something. Fuck. I mean, with a vagina, I feel like, and this might be unpopular, but like, you really got to get in those crevices. Yes. I think it's actually harder to probably shave a vagina than a dick. Guaranteed. It has to be. Because there's so many 
crevices that yeah. that hair can go. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Um. It's it can be scary, but mm-hmm. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Fuck. So Zoe, we were talking before about because mm-hmm. this isn't intoxicated, so we do drink. So yeah. you're, you said that you used to be a hell of a drinker. Yeah. <laughs> What's your relationship with booze? Like, when was the first time you kind of discovered alcohol? Did you, were you someone who drank underage? No, I was the biggest straight edge in, like, <gasps> high school. It was insane. Like, really? Oh, my God, yeah. If people were like, oh, we're going to get drunk, I was like, nah, not me. I'm going to have water. <laughs> I was the same, actually. Yeah. Yeah, throughout high school. I think it's just because I didn't want to get like in like trouble. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was so worried that I was going to get into trouble or like get found out that I just didn't. Right. And then my first year of university, I um, went to like a party in somebody's dorm room and they had some rum and they were like, do you want some? And I was like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is college. Yeah. <laughs> of course I do. Oh, yeah. And I got fucking hammered. It oh, was man. insane. It was gross. Like, I was sloppy. Because at that age, you don't know your, like, you don't know your limits. Yeah. You don't know, you don't know what alcohols will mix well with you and which won't. Yeah. So you just, you just kind of try everything and mm-hmm. then it's trial and error and it's complete shit show. Yeah. Oh my God. It was awful. I was like knocking on people's doors, like <laughs> screaming. It was, <laughs> I was Scream! insane. Like, like, help me? Or like. <laughs> no, just being like, ah! <laughs> and like running down the whole oh, way. Man. Yeah. What color? Did you go to? I went to York University, so it Holy was uh, in Ontario, Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that like a party school, or is it more? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess every university has an aspect to it, like yeah. party, but like I just think that there's some universities that are more party universities, or like they have like that reputation. Yeah. Because like I went to I went to X for one year, mm-hmm. Cinemax in Anaganesh. And, yeah. Like. I also was the same as you. Mm-hmm. I I was I had a strict upbringing. I'm like I didn't get into drinking until I was like a couple months away from being legal. Yeah. Like I think I had my first drink. Yeah, like it was like a couple months before I turned 18. Yeah. And going into X like you would walk into some, like some of the dorms were fine. Mm-hmm. I lived in the like quiet all girls dorm, which is really fucking lame. <laughs> like, like looking back I'm just yeah. like wow. I kind of wish I lived in the other one, but it was, like, disgusting walking into some of those residences because, like, you would walk in and, like, you would just be drunk by breathing the air. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, this doesn't seem fun at all. <laughs> like, I don't like getting sick. No. But then when I moved out of Anna Ganesh and I moved to Halifax, like, that's when I really, like, mm-hmm. started drinking hard. Yeah. Uh, like, going to the bars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Man, once you, once you like, figure out dancing and booze, that's it. Like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> you know Are you someone I mean? who's a better dancer when they're drunk? Or a worse dancer when they're drunk? I w- I want to say better, <laughs> but probably worse. <laughs> You're just more willing to do it, I think. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. Oh. When I am drunk, I I am not the best at mm-hmm. that. I like to kind of sit back <laughs> and watch everybody. It's it's not not a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> dancing because I've I've had times where I've been so drunk and danced. And like, yeah. The, also drunk sex this has happened too uh <laughs> where there's like a lot of movement and you need to puke yep yep been there <laughs> are, are you a puker when you drink only some things i can't drink rum anymore i i like gag at the scent of it it's just nasty Rum's um nice. if i don't eat like beforehand oh, i that's... will vom like it's the fuck Oh man! And if I don't eat like a snack or something, and then I go like lie in bed, I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the type. Same mm-hmm. empty stomach drunk is the worst. Yeah, and I'm the type to throw up, like, the night of. Like, I I've heard stories mm-hmm. of people being like, I'm so hungover, I puked all day, and it's just like, no, no like when I'm hungover, it's like mostly I'm tired and I have headaches and I ache. Yeah. Like I just yeah. ate like every, moving hurts kind of thing. Yeah, that's my hangovers. Mm-hmm. I'm never really nauseous. Mm-hmm. Um. It's the night before that, like, if I'm going to puke, it's going to happen right before I go to puke. Yeah, puke. same here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's a fucking challenge. But I haven't puked in a while. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll change that. I, I feel the need <laughs> I feel the need to get very drunk. Yeah. Lately. Same. Oh, my yeah. God. Just, like, blackout, like, Yeah, because I drink a lot with the podcast, mm-hmm. but it's not always, like, schmammered. Yeah. But, like, I'm drinking more... 
days out of the week now. Yeah. But my quantity is, like, fairly low. Like, yeah. I usually don't go above three drinks mm-hmm. or so. Mm-hmm. But I feel the need now. Like, work has calmed down, people. So, like, no more impromptu episodes. I'm going to go on a recording <laughs> spree and, like, really work on the podcast. Yeah. But, like, I, I want to take a day and just get absolutely chef Yeah. Just for me. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I, you have to, right? I just, I just need to do that. Mm-hmm. That actually leads greatly into <laughs> what I think me and Zoe are going to... We're going to talk about kind of everything today. Yeah. This is going to kind of be a getting to know Zoe cast in a way. <laughs> but we bonded over how we deal with life and how mm-hmm. we both think we're pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I notice how I said that. I'm not saying we are pieces of shit, but we think we are, right? Yeah. So, like, I had a status a while ago, because, like, I've been thinking a lot lately about how I deal with stress Mm -hmm. as a 31-year-old, and how the older you get, you just deal with things a little bit differently. Yeah. Like, maybe a little bit better, but, like, some things don't change. Yeah. The thing that doesn't change with me is just fucking stress eating like Mm -hmm. i am the type to either eat absolutely nothing when i'm stressed out yep um like no appetite nothing Mm -hmm. or i will just treat my body like it's never going to die same oh my god (laughs) (laughs) so i made a status that was like you know you're having a bad i don't remember what it was but it was like you know you're having a bad day when like you You've had a really bad day and you go and you eat ice cream, but you're lactose intolerant. Yeah. (laughs) Like those types of days where you're like, I know this is going to cause me Mm -hmm. 24 hour diarrhea. Yeah. But I'm going to eat this ice cream because I just want to feel good for two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. In the midst of all this fucking stress. So like you said that you related to that. Oh my God. Very hard. Relate to it so hard. Oh my God. I'm a, I'm an actual piece of garbage. (laughs) (laughs) Same, 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 same. So why do you think that though? Like what what makes someone what makes you think that you are? Is it just you Man. just kind of do whatever you want without the consequences? Yeah. Kind of thing? Like that's a lot of it, right? <laughs> that's it. Like yeah. I, I don't fucking care what's going to happen. I just do whatever. <laughs> yeah. And oh, the eating man. thing is, it's so easy to just... So easy. Let yourself go. hmm And I don't have control over it at all. Oh what are God. your go-to, like, comfort foods? Pizza. Ugh. Pizza, poutine. Poutine. Is both. My oh, God. boneless bites. Holy what shit. What are those? They're like chicken nuggets. <gasps> oh, <but laughs> yes. I love so chicken good. Mm. Chicken Oh, my God. I think anything just like fried, you know. Anything what I mean? deep monster sticks. Like, oh fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you, I can fuck up some monster sticks oh. any day. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. So hard. I'm like, yeah. I just, I, I, I feel like I'm always the person who's like, treat yourself. Like you, just, <laughs> and it's just like I'm always treating myself though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, when am I not actually? But I, it's interesting because like I, I read or I heard on another podcast actually, mm-hmm. um, people who get are getting over eating disorders, learning the idea of actually not restraining your, mm-hmm. not restraining yourself from food because this is this could be fucked up. I don't really know if there's anything <laughs> behind this. Yeah. But the idea that like if you restrain yourself, so if you are someone who's like, I can't eat anything bad. Mm-hmm. I need to be eating vegetables all the time. Yeah. When you have the chance to let loose, you are going to go nuts and you are going to eat yeah. so much junk. But if you're someone who just always lets yourself eat what you want, yeah. you actually learn to portion control a little bit better than other people. I guess so, yeah. So you're actually not denying your body yeah. of anything. Yeah. So you're you're never going to like just order like $100 worth of food. In yeah. Night. Because you're not... Right. Restraining yourself. Right, right. Which is, it's kind of weird logic, but I'm, I always think about that when I when I eat that. I'm like, okay, I'm actually, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's fine. I'm not going to binge, binge yeah. and purge or whatever it is. Yeah. Um. So I always think about that when, yeah. when you're stress eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I yeah, get it. Is. Are there other things you do to relieve stress that, like, aren't so great? <sighs> Casual sex. <laughs> Let's talk about you it, know? shall we? <laughs> We talked about this off mic. Yeah. That Zoe and I are no stranger to the world of... Would you call it friends with benefits or casual sex? There's a difference. Um, Do you think there's a difference? 
Oh, there's a huge difference. Yeah. I think I generally only do like a hump and dump fucking check really? like one time. Gotta go. And so you don't have any like it's not a friend situation. It's like no total new person. And then they're yeah. gone the next day. Yeah. Damn. Like a few hours later. <laughs> OK. I, so do you meet these guys online? Yeah. All of them. Damn. All of them. What's that process like? So do you do you talk to them for a long time? Like before you do it? It really depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes I'll talk to them for maybe like a day and then I'll be like, let's hang out. (laughs) And do you initiate it? Like, so when you say let's hang out, is it just implied that? Yeah. 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 Unless you're like hardcore sexting before, it's always implied, you know? Always implied. At least for me anyway. Yeah, no, totally. And I think us, I think humans generally, Mm -hmm. we don't want to be so out there to say, come over and fuck. We kind of want to say, come hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's just see what happens. (laughs) Because you never know. You could, could get the person over there and just be like, I am not into this anymore. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, I've met people who I'm like, nah, but I still do it. That was going to be one of my questions. Like, if you've ever boned anyone that you kind of regret or, like, in hindsight, you're like, probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I mean, I don't ever, like, regret anything just because why Why? would I? Like, I already did it. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Very true. Dang, dang. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, if uh, if I, like, meet somebody who I'm like, "Uh, I don't really know. And then we, like, fuck. And then they leave and I never have to see them again. You know what I mean? There's something pretty freeing about that. Yeah. Because you have a moment together. It's like a night. And then it's just like, okay, bye. Yeah. Like, like maybe like, let's not ruin this by continuing to hook up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, what makes a guy when you're talking to them online? So let's just say you're talking with a couple guys. Mm -hmm. What makes them... (laughs) Fuckable. <laughs> what do you look for in a sex... That's actually a good question. Like, what do you look for in a sex partner? Like, is it is it a mix of attraction and just, like, you're not going to murder me? Mm-hmm. Or, like, is there something else there that kind of makes you want to have sex with someone more? Man, if they can make me laugh, that's, oh. that's it. Like... That's so true. Oh, my that's God. Man, like... And I don't mean, like, a <laughs> kind of like, laugh, but a, like, belly laugh. A belly like, laugh. It's yeah. gross. I'm disgusting because I'm laughing so hard. Oh, I know. It's, it's such a turn on. Yeah. It's probably, like, my number one thing. Yeah. That sense of humor. Oh, my God. If a guy's not funny, then get out. Like Go, like, go fuck yourself. You know? Also, if they don't appreciate comedy. Yeah. I feel like, like there's a lens that you can look at the world mm-hmm. where it's, like, these people who are so serious, like... Like, what are you doing? I don't want anything to do with you. No. Like, learn to fucking laugh. Yeah. Fuck. Come on, dude. Like, <laughs> And so you... You said that you were in a long-term relationship Mm -hmm. and that you've been single for, like, two-ish years? It'll be, like, one and a half. Okay. Around there. Oh, hey. Yeah. That's actually not that long. No. (laughs) So how are you finding it? Um, Last year was so hard. Like, Mm. the first year was fucking awful. I was throwing my cooch at everything. I was like, come here. Like, it was like a penis flytrap. It was insane. (laughs) (laughs) A penis (laughs) flytrap. Yeah. But that's actually like I that's kind of what I regret. Mhm. I really didn't do that. Mhm. Like I've you know, like I've had a fair amount of sexual partners, but I <laughs> I want it to be higher. Yeah. I do. <laughs> like like and I'm 31 saying this now. Mm-hmm. But like my first year like I think I had sex with like maybe two or three new people and that was it. And okay. in, that, in my mind that's not a lot. Because I feel I mean. like, I feel like most people mm. act the way you do. Yeah. When they, because like you said it was like a four year relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're just like, new penis! Well, man, it was fucking me. stale in that relationship, I'll tell Damn. you. <laughs> it was not good. So as I, it was maybe like the day after we broke up. It was New Year's Eve, and I hit somebody up on Tinder. Really? And, oh, yeah. We we fucked. <gasps> but you know what? It's a distraction. Yeah. Uh, people don't really like to talk about sex in this way, but it is a distraction mm-hmm. and something to fucking do. Exactly. Yep. And it feels good, and you're, like, going through, like, a shitty time, and you're not feeling that great. Yeah. So 
So why not, you know? Totally agree. I feel like I have the most sex when I'm going through the shittiest time. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just like, well, I'm feeling so shitty. And this is like all these endorphins mm-hmm. and shit that like I'm not getting otherwise. Yeah. So like it, it just makes for like a good situation. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But like, I feel like being single comes with so much fun and freedom and like mm-hmm. but then it also comes with like learning experiences yeah and like that's something a lot of people don't really like we, i mentioned this before but like if someone who's only been in relationships and like is not used to being single mm-hmm. sees a single person they, they might think like they're inexperienced or like they don't know anything about men or yeah like, and it's just like that's quite the opposite yeah because when you're single you, you go through a fucking lot yeah you really do mm-hmm. and you might go through sketchiness yeah. so me and zoe i mentioned the bathroom story so the nudes <laughs> we both are advocates of new nude, nude yes i would say yes 100 we, we both do it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's something I think people on the outside might think is sketchy. But I don't think it I mean, is. No, I don't think it's sketchy at all. Yeah. So what? what's the appeal to you? It's hot. Like, yes. <laughs> I want to, I, like, sometimes I'll take them for me. Like, I want to look at myself and be like, damn, bitch, you better yeah. work. Yeah. But other times I want to, like, send them off to whoever and just get, like, all these compliments. Be like, oh, yeah, I am a hot piece of ass. You know what I mean? Is there a etiquette to how you do it so do you just send out of nowhere or do you ask them first do you do a little build-up situation where you're in a conversation or is it just like a flat out i kind of like sending the surprise nudes every now and then (laughs) but i mostly do that over snapchat because i don't want to send a text with a nude out of nowhere Mm. because you never fucking know where they are with their phone yeah exactly (laughs) i mean (laughs) unless you don't care about that in which case that's a whole other mood to be in man i really don't care (laughs) (laughs) yes it like depends on the person like if i've been like uh chatting with them a little and we've already like exchanged nudes then i'll i will send out just a flat out pussy pic to them Uh uh-huh yep that's amazing and be like hey what's up (laughs) yeah and there's kind of a fun aspect to that as well where it's like well i mean they could be in the line at starbucks like maybe other people will see it and then you can kind of take it as like well i don't fucking care if they see it yeah um do you ever do face Face photos? Yes. Oh. <laughs> as I uh, as I age, I um realize it's probably not the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it can be nerve wracking. Yeah. That's really all I'll say about that. Mm-hmm. Um the people that I know have nude pics of me with my face. I'm just like, I'm I pretty much trust them. Yep. Because usually those people are people that I got shit on to. So if they Mm -hmm. leak my news, oh, I can sure leak something about you. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you you were receiving those photographs. So, I don't know. Yeah. But it's, I tend to not do face. Mm -hmm. But I've done a couple with face. I, uh, I've done a lot with face. (laughs) Like, so so many. (laughs) But there is a... There's, there's something hot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, this is me. Does it take you a while to get a good one? Do you find it's like selfies it, sometimes? Yeah. I mean, it depends on like the day. Like, if it's in the morning and the lighting's right and I'm like feeling cute like in bed, then it's like one and done. Aww, like, that's it. That's nice. Yeah. But if, if I'm like drunk <laughs> and it's like dark, then I have to take like six in a row. Oh like, my God. <laughs> it's so true. My photo vault, I have this app called photo vault Mm -hmm. which is like it's like a separate app on your phone Mm -hmm. where you can store pictures and you need like another password to get into it yeah so like you have your password for your phone and whatever but like then you need a separate password for the app yeah so it's like those shit that shit is on lockdown when i'm doing like nudes like i will put them just put them all in there and Mm -hmm. you'll notice like various shots of the same pose or like the same thing and it's just like you just gotta get it just right yeah like you gotta figure out your angle like i love shower nudes Mm -hmm. those are my favorite Mm. because i don't know i just i figured out the ways in which to angle my phone yeah so that it's a not getting soaked by the shower yeah my phone has so much water damage it's not even funny (laughs) like i go to apple and they're like what are you doing with your phone like there's 
there's a lot of damage yeah. in here. Yeah. I don't have a screen protector on it. So <laughs> Me neither. But, like, you find the angles that are, like, right for you. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's, like, a, like kind of fun. Oh, yeah. And then there's, like, other angles that you're, like... Yeah, it's super fun. Just, like, a tasteful nude now and then. Sometimes tasteful, Maybe, yeah. like, not that tasteful. Sometimes you know I mean? it's straight-up spread eagle vagina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a couple of those, and I'm like, you know, I don't have a lot of these, but mm-hmm. the ones I have are pretty fucking awesome. They're dope. Oh, man. If you get a good one, that's it. Like, I remember the day that I f- took my first vagina photo. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I was kind of sexting with somebody, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine essentially just encouraged it. He, he, it was a guy friend, actually. Oh. Not someone I'm involved with in any way, but he was just like, you should just send your vagina. Like, oh, go hey. in the bathroom right now and do it. And yeah. I was like, all right. And I literally went in the bathroom and, like, propped my leg up in the toilet. Oh, yeah. And got in there. <laughs> and I was like, I just found the right angle. Because, yep. like, and we talked about this before the mic came on. But, like, I'm okay with my vagina. I'm mm-hmm. not fully, like, I love it so much. Mm-hmm. But I definitely don't hate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think taking photos of your vagina will actually help you love it more. Oh, Definitely, one hundred percent. Looking in the mirror because mm-hmm. you are someone who said that you love it. Oh yeah, you love yeah. it. Give her some love, man. She's just trying to live. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing her best. Yeah, She's doing her that's best. That's it. Oh man, photos and videos. Videos. Fuck, yes. Oh my god, mm-hmm. the art of the video. So hot. Honestly, like sometimes I'll watch my own and be like, oh fuck, like really I need to go. Like, See, good for you because I can't. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I can't watch mine back. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It'll be okay. But like, I just, I usually just record it and, yeah. it and I'll save it and I'll put it out to people. Yeah. And I'll just hope that it's all right. Yeah. And then I usually don't watch it back. I think but. I'm really okay with it just because I used to cam a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, so much. So I would like watch my own shit anyway. You used to camp? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Yeah, man. <laughs> How many years did you do that? Um, not very long. I did it for maybe less than a year. Right. But I made some big. Did dope. you really? Yeah. Was it my three cams? <laughs> no, I used something called Streammate, I think. Streammate okay. models. It was uh it was pretty pretty legit. Like people would like take you know private chats and you would get paid by the minute. Like God yeah. damn. Did they ask you to do stuff that you were just like straight up not comfortable with doing? I mean, some stuff, yeah, but yeah. I'll try anything at least once within Damn. like the re- within a reason. I know? like to say I'll try everything at least twice mm. because I feel like if you try it once, it's kind of mm-hmm. like anal. Like what I've heard from people is is like don't just try it once and then judge it off of that kind of thing. Like yeah. give it a couple times. But I like that idea. That's that's really cool. Yeah, you gotta be really confident to do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's because I've thought about it sometimes. Sometimes I've been so broke. Or, like, on the verge of being mm-hmm. laid off, or I'm just like, hmm. I mean, you definitely could. Hmm. But, like, you got to get so comfortable with yourself in front of the camera mm-hmm. is the yeah. thing. And that's my thing. Like, I'm going to do a episode about body image mm-hmm. soon coming up with my friend. And, uh, like, it's the weirdest thing in the world. Because, like, I feel like I'm very, I'm pretty confident in my body right now. Mm-hmm. I, I would say probably more so than ever. Mm-hmm. But when I instantly either take pictures or like see it on video or like I'm instantly just like oh this isn't what I'm seeing in real life yeah and that's what I'm nervous about with camming it's like I could be in the zone and like face to face with somebody and be totally confident but like as soon as it's like recorded in any way I feel instantly less confident yeah um but like and I get it It, I I would assume that most cam girls probably take some time to get comfortable with the camera yeah and like figure out what yeah. they're doing yeah because yeah. you can't just like turn on a cam and like make money like, no gotta... no you have to have like a shtick that's the thing mm-hmm. did you have a certain shtick or were you just yeah i was like the girl next door like <gasps> with i like painted on some more freckles oh my god <laughs> oh yeah did you dress up differently <laughs> yeah oh my god i had like little skirts and like little tops and Little dresses and bows and shit. Like, it was it was pretty cute. It was cute. Guys go bonkers over the schoolgirl thing. Yeah. I feel like it's the one thing that mm-hmm. without a doubt will never fail with a man. Oh, my God. I have yet to meet a man mm-hmm. who will not get super fucking hard over, like, some knee highs and a skirt. 
It's because it's hot. It's so hot. Oh, my uh, God. Has glasses in there and pigtails? Oh, yes. Pigtails? Yes. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I hate to say, but I have done that for guys before. Put my hair in pigtails Same for room. them. Oh, yeah. They when they, like, grab it. them? Oh, oh my fuck. God. <laughs> it, it just it never fails. Did yeah. You know, the girl next, that's so, and did you develop relationships with anyone that you met? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, and they were obviously sending you money, but, like, there was, mm-hmm. like, a rapport. Yeah. There. That's yeah. so cool. Some of them, like, still follow me on, like, my really? regular social media. Like, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you ever want to go back to it, you could. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of comforting mm-hmm. in a way. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, it was, I mean, some of the comments were, like, not very nice. You know, like, dudes being like, oh, I want this for free. Like, oh, piss off. Fuck yourself. I'm trying to do, so, like, I'm doing a job. Like, could Why you Why would you go to a campsite and say that? Like, yeah. if you want stuff for free, like, just go to a porn site. Yeah. Like, fuck you. I'm doing something. And there's something to be said for, I've started recently considering, mm. honest to God, considering paying for porn recently. Oh, really? Because I just feel like, I don't know, it's just an kind of underappreciated industry. Yeah. <laughs> in a weird way. Yeah. Um, and there's an aspect, I think, to, like, being single for so long. Like, porn is usually, like, your go-to, like, mm-hmm. little, like, you get your rocks off that way. Mm-hmm. I've learned to get my rocks off by porn more so than, like, another physical person. Same. So I'm just like, why am I, like, why don't I pay for some yeah quality shit? Yeah, like, the full movie instead of, like, yeah. these five-minute clips. Oh, I hate those. Yeah. I hate those so much. I've often considered it. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm really broke, so <laughs> not yet, not yet. But like, I've yeah. often considered like getting to a point in my life where like I allot a certain amount of money to that because mm-hmm. I think it's really important. Yeah, like, yeah. Why would you fucking say something like that on a campsite? Go, fuck yeah. Yourself. Like, come on, dude. Mm. We both know why you're here. Just send me some money and I'll show you my pussy. Like, fuck. Yes. Dude. And did you like? And you said that there was like private chats and stuff. Yeah. Did you feel more comfortable one on one in a private chat, or did you feel more comfortable like in just like the group? Honestly, the private chat was the best, just because you were one on one with somebody who was willing to pay you to do whatever they wanted. Wow. Which is pretty dope you know what i mean that is, and it's kind of more intimate too yeah i mean yeah. with like the uh i guess the home page like the group chat or whatever there were just like people being like show us your tits right oh, right do this but i mean i'm not gonna do that like, uh, you gotta pay yeah There's you gotta kind of pay to a, play man kind of an act of it like interestingly enough i kind of think of it kind of like burlesque mm-hmm. like you will tease for free because yeah. you eventually want them to pay for yeah. more. Yeah. And that kind of goes into the sexting thing, I mm-hmm. think. I, over the years, like, I used to just just give people what they wanted right away. Yeah. And over the years, I've kind of shifted that to, like, I'm going to tease the heck out of you mm-hmm. because I actually want to have real sex with you. Yeah. Like, Sexting only is so fun for so long. Yeah. And then you know it gets I mean? like a little boring and repetitive and you're like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, why are we doing this if it's never going to lead to sex? Is yeah. That, yeah. Like, that's kind of my thing about it. And like, it is what it is. Like, mm-hmm. I'll just be really honest and just be like, okay, like, here's here's my boobs. But like, if you want to see the whole thing, come over. Yeah. Seriously, though. Like, like why do you want to see the whole thing when you can just have it, you know? exactly it mm-hmm. and it, it kind of goes into the whole like women are meant to be looked at and objectified and it's just like and I realize like that there's an aspect of like sexting that's kind of objectifying yeah. myself but I have started looking at it as more of a tease mm-hmm. and it's, it is it's definitely. a step to the real thing yeah hopefully oh yeah uh, it doesn't always happen that way though no <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when, like, you send a nude. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they just write back, like, that's awesome. That's a nice picture. Yeah, like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not necessarily expecting a dick pic back. No. But, like... Give me something else, like... Nice picture? Yeah, okay. Like, nice you would say that if I took a picture of a goddamn sunset. Yeah. Like, like a picture of a muffin. Like, <laughs> nice pic. Nice, nice muffin. <laughs> It's just, it annoys me so Yeah. Much. It really annoys me. Come on. Like, I, I mean, I might not have taken this for you, but I'm sending it to you, you know? It's such a gift. Mm-hmm. You guys realize that? Like, 
You're getting I don't know. like you're getting naked bodies sent yeah. to you from real people that you could fuck in real life. Yeah. It's not like we're like you know, a porn star or like yeah. someone unattainable. Mm-hmm. Like we are like either your friend or your acquaintance or like someone you know or like yep. like we are attainable. We're doing this yep. to be attainable to you. Yeah. So come on. Yeah. Ugh. Fuck. <laughs> it infuriates me. I've done it for so long. Mm-hmm. I, do you have a certain style to your sexting when you text with someone? It's usually like fairly kinky depending on the person. Um, I mean, if they're into like some BDSM, I have some stuff and I like take some pics and it's like pretty hot. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. But I mean, it, I used to be like so, like when I was younger, I would, I would get into like so much detail. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Would you like write like erotic <laughs> novels to people? Yeah. Like, yeah. this is what I want you to do to me. Like, do it. But now it's just kind of like, come over and we'll just do it live, you know? <laughs> That's kind of my thing, too. Mm-hmm. I feel like you reach a point where it's just like, you don't really want to waste time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, if I feel it's not leading there. Like, here's the thing. I'm like, I'm going to, I thought about this recently. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be fucking honest about this. Like, sexing is fun, but like, I'm single and I don't have a consistent partner in my life. Yeah. So, like, if we're just going to be touching ourselves over text, like, I do that all the time anyways. That's not yeah. really exciting to me at all. Yes. Um, what's exciting to me is sexting before banging in real life. In other words, like, mm-hmm. almost prearranging it, like, okay, we're going to hang out on this day. Yeah. And then if you sex before that, that's building up tension. Yes. There's a purpose to that. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. But if it's just literally, like, drunk horniness. Mm-hmm. What the fuck ever? I touch myself all the time anyways. It's yeah, so like, exciting to me. I don't need your help. <laughs> and it's the same. Thank you. Right? And it's the same when like you're with a guy and he like wants you to touch yourself in front of him. It's yeah. Like, yeah, I'll do it because it makes you happy. But yeah. like, this is what I do all the time. Yeah. Why? Like, and I get that guys like seeing that. Mm-hmm. But I do this all the time. Like, yeah. Can you pleasure me? Because yeah. that's. <laughs> Isn't that why, why you're here? We're here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It frustrates me a lot. Oh, my God. I know what you mean. But. Mm-hmm. But sometimes things can be sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing me and Zoe briefly talked about mm-hmm. was the idea of being the other woman. Mm-hmm. We're at the end of the episode now, so if you made it this far, um, <laughs> you deserve to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe not deserve, but... You've earned it. <laughs> you've earned it. But you said that you have you've you've been the other woman. Oh yeah. Times. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and what's that like for you? I mean, so this is a perspective that people don't hear a lot. Yeah, I mean, it really uh like last year, my like first year of being single, that's all I really looked for just because it was no commitment, like one and done, like I can get you off the way your partner can't. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, honestly, I was, like, kind of into it. (laughs) It's, this is what people, and you know what? Mm -hmm. People don't like to talk about this because we're usually scared of being judged. Yeah. Like, being kind of talked, like, you're scared of being seen as a bad person. Yeah. And the thing is, is, like, no one's fucking perfect. No. And everyone's really, really complicated. Even mm-hmm. that person doing the cheating. There's, and I hate saying this because I think it's inbred in us to think, it's not your fault that your man cheated on you. You did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I learned, and it's a harsh truth, mm-hmm. but if you are sexually happy and emotionally, and emotionally happy in the relationship, and if you are meant to be monogamous, mm-hmm. if you are somebody who has a monogamous mind. Yeah. You won't cheat. Right. So if you're cheating, there's something in you that's not quite happy. Yeah. And what it doesn't really have to do with... You could really love that person Mm -hmm. and care about them and respect them, but maybe there's a part of your mind that wants to fuck other people or wants to do something that your partner, who you love so much and care about, yeah, and it's not taken away from that, yeah, but you want to do something... That you're not really getting from them. Yeah. And that's yeah. nothing on them. That no. is the mix of the people. Mm-hmm. That's two people coming together with slightly different yeah. values. Yeah. And so that person is not perfect. And yes, that is not ideal. That is mm-hmm. not ideal to be in a monogamous situation mm-hmm. and doing something outside of that. Yeah. And as the other woman, and we talked about this before the mic came on, but like, 
It's the idea that you're kind of giving them something. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of an escape. Yeah. Or letting them not be on their best behavior for a bit. Yeah, exactly. And that's fucking exciting. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's fun. Yeah. And no, you're not always thinking in the moment. No. About that other person who's involved that you could hurt. I'm not thinking about them at all, if I'm going to be honest. That's I'm just thing, thinking about me, man. That's the thing. It's a selfish... Mm-hmm. Listen, it's selfish all around. Yeah. If you are doing if you are doing that, you are being selfish. Both yep. people are. Yeah, exactly. But, like, you just got to have a head on your shoulders and not guilt yourself so much about it. Because, like, mm-hmm. that was me. Like, I'm, I pick and choose who I talk about this with because there's a lot of judgment. Mm-hmm. Especially if you are somebody who is monogamous. Yep. And will always be with just one person and is satisfied with one person Mm -hmm. and is really in love because love is different to everybody. Right. And there's some people who can really love someone and then that's it. Yeah. And then there's other people who can love somebody and want to spend their life with somebody, Mm -hmm. but they want to just fuck other people. Yeah. Just have some fun. The thing is, Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. It's just how you do it. Exactly. Yeah. So the right way to do it, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. Is if you flood yourself, like, your mind wandering a bit. Yeah. Talk about it with your partner. Yes. Fucking oh, my talk. God. Like, yes. Like, this is the thing. Mm-hmm. Talk about it with the partner. Let them know. And, like, discuss the idea of, like, threesomes. Yeah. Or open relationship. And I know it's yeah. hard. I know it's, like, that's not an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I think there's a way you can do it that's not necessarily putting yourself on the line. Like, you can mm-hmm. almost ask questions. Just be like, oh, hey, like, have you ever thought about fucking anyone else? Yeah. Like, have you ever, or have have you ever thought about bringing someone in to mm-hmm. this relationship? Like, almost just probe them a bit. Yeah. Like, ask yeah. questions. And I feel like people don't do that enough. No. Oh, my God. And so this is why we have sketchy guys yeah. coming to us, mm-hmm. or, like, women like us. Mm-hmm. Because... They have an escape. Yeah, exactly. That's and exactly it. It's a perspective that we don't hear enough about. Mm-hmm. Cause like I told Zoe about a situation that happened to me recently that just made me fucking think. Yeah. And has rattled me a bit in the sense of like how people draw lines mm-hmm. and what they think is cheating and not cheating. Yeah. Everyone's so different. And I think yeah. that's something people in relationships should talk about. Yeah. Like, what is your like what can I do and not do? Yeah. With you? Exactly. Can I flirt with other people? Can yeah. I can I get nudes for other people? Because yeah. you let me watch porn, and if you let me watch porn, getting a nude photograph from somebody yeah. really isn't much different than porn. Exactly. Whew, it's just, it's really tough. Oh my god, it's so hard. And it's insane. Do you ever feel, have you ever gotten like really sad about it when you've been in situations like this? Or are you somebody who can very much so separate it and just say like, this was just a fun experience and... <laughs> and I'm done with it. You know what I mean? I wish yeah. I was like that, but I mean, honestly, uh when it's happened, I just kind of like brush it off. Like I don't I don't even think about like them being in a relationship unless they talk about it, then I'm like, okay, well, now I feel like a dick. Like <laughs> thanks. Yeah. But I mean, if they don't talk about it, and I mean, as long as they bring it up in the beginning and they're like, "Hey, I'm in a relationship. It's yeah. not great." Just yeah. looking to hook up. Then I'm like, great. Cool. And there's an aspect to that mm-hmm. where you have some closure, I think. Yeah. Because I think a lot of guys who cheat or do sketchy things might not even give you that. They might not even mention it. Mm-hmm. They might just be known that they're in a relationship and then yeah. they don't. And I and that's the thing about it. Like, And I get guys that they're like, they don't want to talk about it with the person they're cheating with. Yeah. But like, if you give that person, like the other woman or whatever, mm-hmm. a reason why it's happening... It helps us validate what we're doing. Too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, like, if you say, I just love, I'm so in love with my girlfriend. Like, she's the best person ever. Mm-hmm. I'm so fucking happy, but let's bang. Yeah. It's like, I mean, what? What is, what like, am I? <laughs> why'd you call me? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're happy with this girl? Like, what the fuck? What's going on? But if you hear them say something like, you know, I don't feel I can fully be myself with her. Mm-hmm. Or... I want things that she doesn't. Yeah. Uh, if I mean, you hear like, that, the specific thing that she isn't on the table for. Like, she doesn't want that. Like, exactly. Because yeah, then dude. you feel you're filling a need. And yeah. you actually feel like kind yeah. of more like a person. Yeah, exactly. Than you would if you were literally just getting fucked and left. Yeah. I'm like, it's just an, it's an interesting mental. It's like mental Olympics sometimes. Yeah. I feel like. 
And something that I, like, I've alluded to this in the podcast before, but, like, it's just a very interesting experience to go mm-hmm. through. And it helps you kind of in a way, in a fucked up way, if mm-hmm. you're someone who has been the other woman, it helps you know yourself a bit better. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. In a weird way. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not ideal. I mean, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. It happens. Yeah, it fucking happens. Yep. If, if you meet someone that you want to fuck and you're not tied down to anybody... That's on them. Yeah. That is on them. Exactly. They're the ones who know. Like, yep. if you don't tell me, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> have you, ooh. So, like, have a lot of your experiences been not knowing and finding out later? Or have you known a lot of times? Oh, no. I time? always know. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's only been a couple times that I've actually had sex with someone and then realized they're seeing someone mm. after. But most times I know. Yeah. Uh, and yes, like, judge away. Like, me and Zoe are on the same page here. Yeah. Um, we don't think we are overly terrible people for doing this. No, man. This is, it's complicated sexuality is complicated yep dynamics are really complicated yep uh uh, but like an experience that i had we actually talked about it Mm -hmm. uh talked about what was going on and i was actually hearing a guy verbalize validating yeah cheating yeah and it was fascinating to me Mm -hmm. because i've never heard that before yeah because a lot of guys who cheat don't want to talk about it exactly they exactly. just want to, oh, this was just a, a thing that we did, and that's it. Let's go back to normal. Yeah. And it's like, to them, it's it's an experience, it's a fun night, and then they go back to their life. But, like, mm-hmm. to that other person, you are leaving them with a lot of confusion. Yeah, exactly. A lot. Mm-hmm. And so anything you can give them to, like, alleviate that, yeah. I think is really good. Yeah. <sighs> I just, I had, I I had to get that off my chest. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it's, if you were, and I mean, yeah, some situations, it might be a stranger, Mm -hmm. it might be really casual, but I think, like, if there is a friendship, yeah, or, like, if you've known that person for a number of years, I think you owe them that. Yeah. And that was the thing with this guy, like, he he was naming his girlfriend Mm -hmm. to me for the first time ever. Yeah. And saying her name, and he even said, he's like... I never thought I could say my girlfriend's name in front of you. Oh, whoa. Because in the past, yeah. I haven't. Yeah. It's almost just been like, I have a girlfriend and... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just slightly implied and nothing else. Mm-hmm. But we were like picking each other's brains about it. Yeah. And he wanted to hear my perspective about it and I wanted to hear his. And it was really mm-hmm. fucked up. And like, don't get me wrong, it was a <laughs> fucked up situation. But it was just like kind of relieving in a way. Yeah. To actually, like, have a conversation, like, because I felt like a human. And yeah. And not just, like, a fuckhole. Yeah, exactly. You know? Mm-hmm. Ugh. And I it mean, sucks just feeling like a fuckhole sometimes. There's a time and a place to be a fuckhole, you know? It's <laughs> <laughs> a great quote. <laughs> there is! Mm-hmm. And, um, I think I'm learning that I like to have that connection. Yeah. And I'm, I wish I was somebody who could just be more casual with sex a mm-hmm. bit. I'm getting yeah. there. I'm getting there. Yeah. How, how do you do it? Do you just... <laughs> Who the fuck knows, right? It's such Man, a complicated question to I ask. I have no idea. I, I think just because I don't, like, find it very intimate. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Which is, like, so weird. But, like, if I'm hooking up with somebody, generally speaking, I don't kiss them. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So do you think kissing is more intimate than sex? I do. It's so weird. And like I get that though. Man, when people like want to snuggle, I'm like, nah, like <laughs> I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to be there. Let's shower together. Like, I don't want to do that. That's weird. It's, it's too much. Like, back off. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think the most intimate is oral. Mm-hmm. I it's an intimacy that's another really interesting thing to bring up like it's so different to everybody yeah like there's some people and maybe like this is you but like like the fucking is not intimate at all but maybe another aspect of a relationship is way more intimate yeah like to me goddamn sleeping beside somebody oh is my god probably the most intimate thing you could ever fucking do yes and to most oh people that's god. nothing most mm-hmm. people it's like that's nothing you could sleep beside someone you're not fucking and yeah. that's fine and then the sex is really intimate but like for me it's like if you were sleeping bes- like actually physically going to sleep yep. beside somebody that's one of the most intimate things you can do oh my god mind. yeah I've maybe slept like slept with a handful of people my god me too like I don't know what it's 
Just like, ooh. <laughs> I think know? it's been close to three years since I've done that. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up. But it happens, it you happens. know? <laughs> it's it's a weird transition. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's like waking up next to somebody. You're like, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, what? <laughs> We're discussing together. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like, yeah, to open my, like, it would, even if I was seeing someone, mm-hmm. it would take me a while for, to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even the first time sleeping beside somebody, I probably wouldn't sleep. <laughs> No, you're just like rolling around, I'm, like staring I'm, at the ceiling. I'd be so, I would be so concerned about like, oh, am I gonna drool? Like, yeah, like how loud am I gonna fart tonight? Yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is such a fear. It's such a like women. We don't like to talk about this, mm-hmm. but it's that's such a fear. Yeah, because that once you cross that line, you can't go back. Yeah, that's it. Like, <laughs> you really, really can't. That's the be all end all. Like, we're pals now, friend. Like, <laughs> we're in this. We are in this. Oh my god. So, yeah. what do you think is? Do you think sleep, sleeping is one of them? But what? What are other things that you consider super intimate to you? Where it's like, if I do this thing with a guy, I must really like you. <laughs> you know, it's so it's like holding hands. Ooh, yes. <laughs> you know, like what are we doing? We're like yeah. connecting, but like. Not sexually. It's just like a, a, a physical. Pu- it's a PDA thing. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even when I'm like having sex with somebody, if they want to hold my hand, I'm like, don't <laughs> like yeah. I'm getting too far into it. Like, please stop. Wow. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so bizarre. That is really bizarre. Mm. But I get it, though. Yeah. Um, and I think, too, especially if you're coming from a situation similar to mine where you're maybe used to being kind of the casual sex partner Mm -hmm. or like the other woman like there's an aspect to i'm the girl that is behind closed doors at all times yeah so like hand holding like especially if you're just out walking down the street yeah that's a huge deal oh because that's showing that they're proud of you yeah proud to be with you yeah exactly and if if you're coming from an experience like mine that's something you don't get a lot unfortunately it's really exactly it's really fucking sad Mm -hmm. um but that's that's where you're coming from. Yeah, you're not used to it, so it's mm-hmm. like, whoa! I know. <laughs> like, yeah. bring it back. Stop. Yeah. What about <laughs> kissing in public? Are you into that? Are you PDA girl? Like, I'm not. Me neither. I hate it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I like feel like embarrassed. I guess. <laughs> like, I'm not embarrassed of my partner or whoever. No, yeah. But just like the thought of like kissing somebody or like holding hands with somebody like out in public just like gives me the heebie-jeebies. You and know? I, I hate saying it as a single person. Yeah. Just like, get over yourselves. Yeah, like, go away. <laughs> go somewhere else. <laughs> I kind of like the arm around you, like, if you're sitting or something. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of like that. That's kind of cute. It's, like, a little comforting, like, oh. It is, yeah. Oh, man, PDA. It's just been so long since I've done that. Same. <laughs> I don't know. I does not compute. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, like odd it's really odd mm-hmm. um are you somebody who wants a relationship right now not right now <laughs> no but at some point maybe yeah i mean thinking about like committing to somebody yeah. it's just because when i got into my really my last relationship i moved from ontario to here right. for that person oh, okay so it was like a big commitment you know what i mean and they didn't really like appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. So I mean, whatever. Like you do you, friend. But fuck, but you made this big. Do you yeah. find that you're always the person giving more? Yeah. Same. Like if I'm gonna be in a relationship with somebody, I'm gonna commit a hundred and ten percent. Like this is it. Yeah. Like we can we can have a conversation because I don't think I am monogamous. So we can have a conversation about like seeing other people. Like if you want to see other people, just fucking tell me. Oh my god. And don't don't like go behind my back and be like I'm gonna Sc- cheat on her. Sketchy. Like, yeah. That's, come on. I th- and this is such a great theme to this mm-hmm. episode because it's just the idea that like people are so ashamed. Yep. That they're not monogamous. Like, fuck. <laughs> and it's 2018. Yeah. Come on. Like, Who there's cares? something for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> no matter what your sexual thing is, mm-hmm. there's a place for you. Exactly. And you need to be honest with yourself about it. And, yeah. And actually first accept that in yourself mm-hmm. and then talk about it with who you're with. Because you owe them that respect. Yeah. Because how shitty would it be to, like, just cheat all the time? Yeah, like, fuck, we're both adults. Like, you're not going to hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? Yep. Fuck, and you'll never know unless you ask or, like, have the conversation. Like, yep. 
Who knows? And it's interesting to me, too, the fact that, like, when that guy was over and we were actually mm-hmm. talking, um, I was picking his brain about, are you really monogamous? Um, yeah. Can you be, po- like, could you be in a polyamorous situation or mm-hmm. in a relationship? And I was, like, going on, I was like, okay, so... What just went down with us? And like, I'll just say it very vaguely. I'll just say that it was hand stuff. And mm-hmm. essentially that was it. Uh, mm-hmm. And a little bit of oral, not on me. Okay. So, Bummer. so that's, that's the situation that happened mm-hmm. with he and I. And I remember talking to him about it and being like, um, so if your girlfriend did what we just did, would that bother you? Yeah. And he was like, kind of. Well, fuck. Why'd you do it? <laughs> and it's just like, so in my mind... That's okay. Like, if that mm-hmm. bothers you, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, what would be better? <laughs> this is Sarah playing relationship therapist. Like, I'm really not. I just, um, I, I've learned a lot through it. And it's just like, and I even told him, I was like, so maybe then if you don't, if that bugs you, a don't ask, don't tell open relationship would probably be best for you guys. Yeah. In other words, give yourselves the freedom to do it. Yeah. But don't hear about it. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of shit that could go wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but maybe that's the best bet for you guys mm-hmm. is if you were to do an open relationship, you just don't hear about it. Yeah. And I think that's the only way I could do it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'd be so curious, though. Oh, like, my God. I would want to know how, everything. How, how, how was the other person? Like, are they better than me? Or because I'm like hella competitive. So <laughs> if my sex part- competition. Yeah. So if my partner's like, oh, yeah, I just hooked up with somebody like no biggie. And they yeah. like didn't tell me about it. I'd be like. Am I still, like, top or... Right. Like, what's happening? (laughs) You would want to know it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you think you would mind that, like, your partner was... See, yeah, I feel like you would be the perfect person for this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, honestly, if they, like, told me about it, it'd be, like, kind of hot. And I'd definitely get off. Yeah. Guaranteed. Well, because I I think, too, I'm becoming more open to the idea of, like, threesomes. Mm -hmm. So, like... In a way, like, this situation with this dude, I'm just like, okay, well, like, maybe we can, like, ease ourselves into actually, like, a threesome situation. Yeah. Like, because, like, I would be very down with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, s- have you ever had a threesome? Yeah. <laughs> have you done it a lot? A few times. <laughs> was, it, was it two guys or a girl? It was, uh, it's usually two girls, one guy. And it's usually, like... Married couples. <laughs> Interesting. But there's yep. an aspect to that that I love. Mm-hmm. Because it's a married couple being like, we want to get our rocks off. We want yeah. some more excitement in our yeah. relationship. And we are both going into this mm-hmm. consenting. Like, exactly. Into this. And like, there's something about that that is so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. My thing is, is like, I just got to be, I got to find a hot couple to do it with. Like, yeah. I can't, I just, I wouldn't be. I would be very nervous, like, Mm -hmm. logistic-wise, how that goes down. Like, do you meet beforehand and talk about what's going to go down? Or do you just, like, have some drinks and see how it goes? Like, that's my I mean, in my experience, it's just have some drinks and see how it goes. Probably the best way to do it. Yeah. I mean, you're, like, a little loosey-goosey, like, a little tipsy, and you get into, like, some shenanigans, and it's pretty dope. Damn. (laughs) And, like... do you, do you get jealous of, like, the other girl? I mean, like, I guess because they're married and, like, you're kind of the third party. Mm-hmm. You're going into it as kind of this fresh person. Yeah. So do you kind of watch them together and then just roll with what they're doing? Yeah. Of? Yeah. That's I so mean, cool. I think the last one, it was, like, a, they were going to get married. So it was, like, a like a wedding present. <laughs> oh, my fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't get, like, jealous because they're obviously, like, happy with each other. They're just... Want to have some fun with somebody else? Damn. Yeah. See, my thing is, is like, I just don't know how much I would want to do with the girl. Mm. I would feel more comfortable with the girl mm. as opposed to two guys. Because there's just something about. It's like a lot of work. Two dicks that. Yeah. Like one's like hitting you in the face. And like, <laughs> oh my God. What's happening? <laughs> well, that's just it. I just feel like there would be more pressure mm-hmm. if there was two guys. Yeah. And I feel like, and maybe this is just a dumb assumption, but I feel like in that situation, the two guys are less likely to do things together. Yeah. So there would be more on you. Mm-hmm. As, as like more pressure on you. Yeah. Whereas with two girls, like I could make out with a girl. I could probably do hand stuff with a girl. Mm-hmm. It's just oral. I just don't know. Mm-hmm. If I would ever do that, maybe I would. Who fucking knows? Maybe when you're in the moment, man. You maybe know? when you're in the moment. I mean, I would definitely let another girl go down on me, but 
Hell yeah. I'm very curious. <laughs> I actually really want to do an episode. Mm-hmm. Someone brought this up recently, the idea for an episode about oral sex. Yeah. And to have a lesbian and a straight guy on. Oh, love that. And talk mm-hmm. about what makes good pussy eating. Yeah. <laughs> and then have the flip side. Yeah. A straight girl. Yeah. And a gay guy. Talking Ooh. about blowjobs. Yeah. I love that. And I'm just like, I gotta find the right people for this. Because yeah. that is not something everyone <laughs> wants to talk about. But it's fascinating to me. Yeah. Because, and like a lot of my guy friends are just like, yeah, lesbians, they win. They win. They, they probably know <laughs> way more than we do. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you like oral sex? Like. Yeah. Okay, good. Fucking love it. I'm. I'm nah. I love giving. I love receiving. The whole, everything, the all whole of it. Everything. Oh, yeah. I just can't get off through it. I don't know what it is. I mean, it really depends on the person. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, true. some people, they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And you're like, I know. <laughs> they really got to take the time. Yeah. I think that's, that's the main thing is, mm-hmm. like, in casual sex situations, sometimes they just don't take the time. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes it's rushed or, like, there's a time constraint. Yeah. And it's really tricky. And, yeah. And that's my thing. I'm mm-hmm. I'm just very open with dudes about like you can do this, but it's it's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen unless yeah. you really fucking take the time. Yeah, like unless we have a whole night and you know no plans afterwards, mm-hmm. just go. Yeah, uh, that's something that I wasn't always comfortable with. It took me yeah, a long me time either. To, yeah to like actually be comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. But blowjobs are like. My main insecurity, I always mm. feel like I'm bad at them. Same. But okay. then you're, like, amazing. They're like, oh, that was the best. And you're like, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> and you can only hope they're telling the truth. Yeah. I mean, are you just saying that to, like, make me feel better because you came in my mouth? Or am I actually, like, fantastic at it? Like, which is it? You know what I mean? I think if they're coming in your mouth. <laughs> You're probably fantastic at it. (laughs) I am not into that at all. I've only done that a couple times. Oh, really? I've only done that a couple Mm. times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's, oh, I wish that's going to be my challenge to myself. Yeah. Get over that fear because I feel like that's something every guy just loves. Yeah. I mean, they can't do it themselves. So why not? You know? No. You spitter or. I swallow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an aspect to, to it that I'm like, I feel like it's all or nothing. Yep. I feel like if I were to let a guy do that in my mm-hmm. mouth, like, I can't spit. No. You just got to go all in. Yeah. That's just me and mm-hmm. what I think, but, you know. But sometimes it, like, doesn't taste that great. So you, you're already, like, it's already there. So you just got to, like swallow it <laughs> uh, and that's the thing I'm really bad at doing I can't even do shots <laughs> so I don't know how I could swallow that mm. <laughs> this episode Jesus Christ this might as well be episode 69 because that's fucking dirty oh man episode 69 I want to get like just the dirtiest people I know yeah and have like a multiple person podcast oh yeah like like the dirtiest filthiest people I know is yeah. gonna, are gonna be on episode 69 yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, that's another thing too like 69 aim mm-hmm. that's a whole other thing yep um i just don't find it that comfortable that's just me i mean i don't mind it if like <laughs> the dude is on top then i'm like hell yeah you know what i mean whoever's on top has the worst like whoever's on bottom mm-hmm. it's more comfortable yeah that's just the wit that's, that's it that's just it because mm-hmm. if you're on top oh my god you can't hide much you can't hide anything. You can't hide anything. Oh my god! Damn. And then you have to like position yourself. You're like, is this like good? Can you breathe? Like, I hate up? that. I hate the like transitioning into positions. It's so awkward. So awkward. I yeah. always, <laughs> I always like <laughs> stupid when I'm like transitioning from one position to another. If it's quiet, I'll like giggle. <laughs> Yeah, like it's so awkward. It's it's just like a nervous thing, like a. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> oh my god, are you someone who fakes orgasms? Ah, uh, in my last relationship, I did mm. definitely, but um, I mean, recently, no. That's good. You know, like. If I'm not getting off, I'm not getting off. And I love it when, like, like afterwards, if dudes, like, ask me, like, did you get off? It's either yes or no, you know? So Yeah. I always 
always, I always, and this is, I think, part of, like, being a woman who's, like, scared of a fun name. Mm. But I always instantly go to, like, I didn't, but it's okay, I had a lot of fun. Same. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it, it's okay. Like, I, that's instantly where I go, because I'm very vocal, and I think a mm-hmm. lot of guys, like, they just assume I did. Yeah. And I'm like, I did, oh my god, but oh same. my god, I had so much fun. Yeah. Like, don't worry. Yeah, like, I'll deal with it later. Like, no biggie. I'll deal with it later. But, like, you want to know what? And, like, I'm being totally fucking honest right now. Mm-hmm. Blue clit is a thing, and it's brutal. Ugh, it sucks. It sucks. Oh, my God. It is not talked about enough, because you always hear about blue balls. Yeah. Um, Bitch. This last situation, mm-hmm. where I didn't get off, and mm-hmm. I got someone else off, just... It but sucks. It the kindness of my fucking heart. Yeah. Um, Like, the days after that... And it's like, yeah, I, I guess I could have masturbated that night, but I was too, like, in my head about everything yeah. that went down that I couldn't. Mm-hmm. And, like, the days <laughs> the days afterwards, I was just like, I feel, like, literally, like, I feel like probably how someone with who's pregnant with breast milk feels, like, <laughs> you just need to get it out of you. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, <laughs> I, like, I've been known to just go to a bathroom stall and do it. It happens, man. Sometimes because you gotta... It hurts. Yeah, it fucking sucks. It <laughs> sucks. Holy shit. <laughs> and I was like really honest about it mm-hmm. with this guy. I was just like, yeah, that would have been a lot better if I would have gotten off too. Yeah, like you're not the only person here. Could you not? <laughs> it's like, but then it's like, oh, how much can I expect from someone who's doing something sketchy with me? True. Very true. I instantly go back to that logic of mm-hmm. this is not a, this is not someone who's single. Yeah. Um. They don't really owe me anything. And yeah. that is a harsh mm-hmm. truth mm-hmm. to accept when you are doing something sketchy with somebody. Yeah. Is like, you cannot, you can't get jealous. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can't, you, you don't own them. Yeah. Uh, and it's like these little things that you just have to accept. Yep. And exactly. Like not get upset about. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. Cause like, yeah, if that was a single guy. Yeah. I probably would have been a lot more demanding. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, it's fucked up. It happens, man. <laughs> it's all good, though. It's so fucked you know? up. <laughs> oh, my God. This was a convo. Holy yeah. shit. We, we didn't even get into, like, just general life stuff. I know. <laughs> How we deal with life. It was just like, yeah, we deal with it by casual sex. And yeah, uh, an hour and 15 minutes later, <laughs> this is what it is. Mm-hmm. But, whew. Oh, man. Anything else you're going through that you want to rant about? Yeah, no. Life is so good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so and I good. should say, like, Zoe's recovering from a broken leg. Broken leg, right? Broken ankle, broken yeah. Broken ankle. So you've been, like, out of commission for a while. Yeah. And and you're, you're getting back out there and stuff. Yeah, I'm, like, trying to. It, yeah. uh... I broke it in three places and Jesus dislocated Christ. it. Yeah, like I fucked it up. I fucked it up hard. So I was off of it, like, no weight bearing for two months. Which was awful. Um, and I, like, didn't go out. Like, I could maybe, like, bum my way down the stairs because I don't have an elevator in my building. Um, but, like, being out with crutches and with, like, a cast is the worst. I can't imagine. Fuck, people just give you, like, this, like, pity look. They, they, like, look at you and you see them look at you and then they look at your foot and then they look back up at you and you're like... They're just like, are you okay? Like, I fucking know. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> stop making, stop drawing attention to it. It's oh like my a sunburn. God. It's like yeah. a sunburn. You have a sunburn and people are just like, you're sunburned. It's no like, shit. bitch, I fucking know. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sunburned? Like, holy fuck. I had no idea. How did you pass the time when you were recovering? Like, did you, man, I watched mas- a lot of TV in this I shop? masturbated a lot and watched Damn! a lot of TV. <laughs> Because <laughs> before we were originally gonna just talk about how we're like how we deal with life and mm-hmm. shit, it turned into a sex episode, which I am <laughs> totally okay with. But we were talking about how like the eating thing and mm-hmm. like indulging it, like kind of just embracing, yeah. embracing being a piece of shit essentially. Yeah. And I was telling Zoe about how I will if I have like a really bad day or if I'm like really mentally exhausted, I will just get a bag of chips or something mm-hmm. and lay in the bed with my computer. Just see what happens. Yeah. And sometimes it turns into a down the rabbit hole of YouTube mm-hmm. and just 
not even watching shows that I need to catch up on or that I genuinely like. Just yeah. watching trash YouTube. Just anything. Fucking gossip. Like, there's these gossip uh, channels that yeah. talk about beauty gurus. Yes. And Obsessed. And all, like, all the <laughs> shit going on with their life. Yeah. And I, I will just watch that for hours. And I oh hate my God. it. It's like, I love these beauty gurus. And I think this is bullshit yeah. that you're doing this. As kind of like a career, like yeah. you're dissecting, but I love it too. Yeah, because I want to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> and I will just watch that forever mm-hmm. and eat, and then it will eventually lead to porn. And yeah, just, I, and then at the end of the night, you're just like, "Holy fuck, I haven't left the bed." <laughs> but yeah, like what fucking day is it? Like <laughs> I have not left the bed. I haven't cleaned. I haven't cleaned my like. I will sometimes like skip showers. Oh yeah, if I'm going through a lot of shit, mm-hmm. I will. And I'm kind of a hygiene freak most times. Yeah, but mm-hmm. oh, the fucking gossip channels are so <laughs> so. Like, who do you have? Like, do you, do you follow Jacqueline Hell? No, There's a lot of shit going down with her right now. I. So I was like browsing through YouTube and I like saw something about her and I was like, what's that? So well, I'm pe- going to watch people it People are like gossiping that she's going through a divorce, essentially. Oh my God. Because they've, they've seen pictures and videos of her without her ring. And so they instantly go to, she's getting divorced. <laughs> I mean, but then she's also being really cryptic on social media. Yeah. So she's using social media to tease out that she's going through this like hard time yeah and like she hasn't filmed in a while that's another thing she only puts out like a video every goddamn three weeks or something like that and so a lot of her fans like there's two sides of it like a lot of her fans are are like she's a person too she's going through stuff Mm -hmm. like let her be and then there's other fans that are like this is your job you have a fan base you need to maintain it yeah and i fall kind of somewhere in the middle Mm because i just don't think she is just a youtuber now no She's built this whole kind of brand around her. Mm-hmm. And she, like, has all these brand deals and stuff. And that's probably where she's making most of her money. Oh, yeah. To be honest. Uh, so I don't think she necessarily has to be putting out videos every day or yeah. every other day. Like, a lot of people do. On yeah. But, like, it's just, it's it's this whole rabbit hole. And I've just been following it so intently. <laughs> I'm just like, I just want to know what's wrong. What's going on? Because she keeps hinting at it. And then, like, not saying what it is. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of feel like if you're going to do that, maybe just don't even hint. Yeah. Like, maybe go all or nothing. Yeah. Um, like, that's just one one thing about it that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, if you're going through something, just fucking say it. Don't, don't hint yeah, at it. Yeah, exactly. Because people are going to, and then people are going to make things up in their minds. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's why I've always just been like, this is what it is. Yeah. On the podcast. I'm like, this is what it is. Yeah. Exactly. Stop hinting things out. Exactly. Like, fuck. <laughs> Don't play, like, these mind games. Like, I'm not a mind reader. Yeah. I can't guess what you're thinking. Like, just say it. You just know what I mean? fucking say it. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. That's exactly it. <laughs> well, this was a doozy of an episode. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same, same, same. I'm sure you'll come back on. Aw, Now that so. you've done it once, you can yeah. come back on. I'd actually love to do a Girl Toxicated with Heather. Yeah. I actually asked her if she was around today, and she was like, nah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to get a Girl Toxicated episode. Yeah, that'd be point. so fun. We have a lot more coming down the pipeline. we got some couple episodes coming up. Uh, I'm going to do one all about body image, mm. which is like... Staying confident and whatnot, no matter yeah. what your body is, which yeah. I think is super important. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, so lots coming down the pipeline. Yes. Thanks so much for coming on. Like Thanks I said, for having me. Zoe's a Patreon. Hell um, yeah. she gets bonus episodes. Hell yeah! And, They're fucking tight. Too, and man. the bonus episodes we tend to go all out for because we're not mm-hmm. we don't have to impress as many people. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> so we just name drop, yeah, and we just fucking go all out, and we're, it's just a little bit less, yeah, a little bit less censored, almost in a way. So yeah, you guys should sign up for Patreon if you're interested. Sign so up. You're having fun with it, right? Oh fuck yeah! Good. It's so good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so this was fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. And to the honors, ring that bell, the Yes! <laughs> That's the yes bell. Yes, queen! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god.